Well, hello there. It's rather bright, isn't it? On this glorious Friday morning. Yes. Anyway, so just doing a little blog, my Friday morning blog. Say uh, this week uh, has been rather a hectic week. Last Sunday, I drove down to my parents' house. It was about 275 miles. Uh, door to door and uh, the traffic was absolutely wonderful there's hardly any traffic on the roads now so I was able to just sit there on the motorway doing 70 without a care in the world there's hardly anybody about really nice so anyway I got there Sunday night at mum and dad's house or should I say mum's house now and um, yeah that was a bit tearful and um, Monday, um, I had to run around uh, getting food and stuff in because he just really wasn't prepared for all this. Um, yeah, so we had, had to go and buy some food and stuff. And then my daughter was came in on the on the train, so I had to rush off and get her from the train station uh, at Fairham and take her back home. Um, her and her boyfriend came over from France. It's a long story why my daughter lives in France, so maybe one day, when I feel brave enough, I'll, uh, I'll tell you the story. Uh, yeah, so uh, Tuesday was the day of the funeral, and of course seeing my dear old dad in a coffin, that really, really brings it home to you. And uh, it's really, not the nicest feeling in the world. And of course, um, a, a eulogy was sprung on me. I had, to, I had to suddenly do a eulogy. I was expecting to do it at the gravesite, but uh, they wanted me to do it actually at the ceremony. Um, it wasn't a religious funeral. It was a humanist funeral. So the, the guy that was giving out the speech was very good. Um, he just mentioned love and family and all that kind of stuff without going into all the religious aspect of it, um, which was nice. Anyway, I gave my eulogy and uh, off we then drove to the cemetery where, again, seeing the coffin it all brings it home to you, doesn't it? And then he was slowly lowered into place. And that's where he's staying now. Yeah, it's all very sad, isn't it? So, uh, Tuesday we went back to Mum's house. Um, had a few, uh, a few sandwiches and then a bit of a chat to everyone. And then, of course, my daughter could only spend 24 hours in the country, so I had to then take her back to the train station. Uh, so she could catch her flight. It was an early morning flight, so she was going to spend the, the uh, you know, uh, four to six hours in the, in the airport, just milling around. Uh, anyway, she did that, she's gone. So yeah, she went back on Tuesday and I drove home on Wednesday. Um, got home about um, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. on uh, Wednesday night. So it was all uh, all a bit of a rush, really. Um, none of it was planned. Uh, yeah. But I did Wednesday, when I left Mum's house at midday, we then went to the castle, Portugal Castle, where I grew up. And we used to play as kids. Um, I used to, uh, yeah, back then there was a lot more excavation in the castle grounds itself. So we used to play in all the ruins. Uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. But yes, so um, that was it. We'd walk around Portugal Castle and got a few postcards for some of my top, top uh, followers on, on YouTube. No, actually, one of the one of the ladies in uh, in Canada likes to receive postcards, so I'd said I'd send her one. So I've got a nice 
postcard of Portugal Castle. Oh yeah, before I put this subject to uh, to bed, um, there was a my my dad had a, an old clock, which um, uh, mother said I could have old carriage clock. It's not very big, it doesn't chime, but it didn't keep time. So anyway, I made a few adjustments yesterday and this morning it was only a couple of minutes out over a 24 hour period it was just two minutes out so i'm going to going to make a tiny tiny adjustment and see if i can get it to uh, be nearer the mark than it was before but yes it was nice to get a nice little carriage clock what with mum having bad eyesight she can't see to adjust it or see to wind it up so she said it would be better off in my house where it could be looked after so yeah so that's it then that's um that's dad's funeral over and done with it's um it still grates a bit doesn't it on your on your feelings a little bit but yeah i'll be sad but i've got to move on i've got to carry on that's, haven't we we've got to we've got to uh stay strong and carry on regardless Anyway, so I'm outside, having my coffee, and um, I've been hearing all sorts of stuff on the news about some stupid little girl who decided to pour her own faeces and urine over the statue of Tom, Captain Tom, the guy that managed to raise £32 million for the NHS. Yes. What a silly little girl she was, and that's ruined her life. She'll be forever known now as a, as the the girl that defaced the national hero's monument. And uh, I'm also hearing as well how useless our British police force are. Has anyone ever noticed how useless they've become? We used to have bobbies on the beat going back a few years ago, maybe ten, fifteen years ago. We used to have bobbies on the beat, but some wise guy somewhere said oh neighborhoods don't feel so safe if they see policemen walking around all the time no it was because we had policemen walking around all the time that the neighborhoods felt safe but now i've, I've not seen a bobby on the beat for for almost getting on for two decades 20 years i would say and it's an appalling state they've admitted that they cannot solve burglaries um, they've given up uh, trying to solve car crimes where people have had their cars broken into up in London. They've just given up on that now. Um, you know, and is it ninety-six percent of arrests that they make go without charges? No one's being charged for these um, false arrests. And I've heard when I was driving home, I had a quick look on on my phone, and I, and I saw three stories of photographers who had been falsely arrested and the one guy was he as viciously assaulting a 16 year old guy with a camera he said you're dressed in black you've got a camera in your hand therefore you must be a terrorist well anyway that that he's been now convicted of assault and just waiting to be charged no doubt that young lad will sue the police now for the, the hurt that was caused to him, and rightly so. There's another photographer as well on, on YouTube who was falsely arrested and subsequently released without charge. So he'll be suing the police, and I do believe he's got a payout as well of about £3,000. And I do believe there was a third one as well, which I can't re rightly remember the the name of um, name of the guy now. But he was he was falsely charged with a crime and released without charges. So that's 100% of those three people <laughs> were released without charges, which they then all go on to sue for wrongful arrest. And it was, it was gonna cost the taxpayer at least 3,000 pounds per person. Now if the police keep doing this, they, they're gonna bankrupt us all. You might as well just give us you know, 3,000 pounds as soon as they start questioning us, because you know, you know what's gonna happen. There'll be a false arrest. Uh, it's um, 
it's a terrible state when when you you know the police turn up for a guy with a camera in their in their hordes you're talking five to six police officers turn up for a man with a camera yet somebody's house is broken into it takes two weeks for a, a policeman to turn up to investigate because we all know that they're not going to do anything if someone gets their house broken into they're just going to sit back and oh, oh well the insurance will pay for it but I think you'll find now that people can't afford their insurance people can't afford these luxuries like TV license house insurance good job the car insurance is mandatory I'm talking about cars what is it with all these cars parked in the bicycle mandatory cycle lanes in Hull where I live there are mandatory cycle lanes which are cycle lanes 24 7 and yet I drive past this morning when I went into town for uh, on a little errand there was at least four cars parked that as I drove past so in that short period there were four cars parked and I'm pretty sure if I carried on further into town there would have been more cars parked in the mandatory cycle lane how do you expect cyclists to use the cycle lanes when they're full of cars yeah you're forcing that cyclist into the road into the traffic and if a cyclist gets hit because you've parked your car illegally you are now responsible for that cyclist being hit because you forced him out into the road rather than staying in his cycle lane yeah that's right it's your fault but as I said cyclists aren't the problem on the roads other road users like cars and lorries and trucks they're the ones that are causing congestion they're the ones that are causing tailbacks they're the ones that are causing all sorts of congestion you know they park on the pavement you see it all the time around here where I am you're supposed to leave a buggy double buggies worth of uh, <laughs> room on the pavement but no they don't they, they take up the entire pavement and they expect the pedestrian to walk around them you know when they should be just parked in the road you pay road tax park in the road anyway um, rat beginning to rant but yes the roads were on Wednesday when we drove home the roads were deserted then as well there's hardly anybody on the roads now and uh, we haven't uh, we haven't had our heating on either although it's not that cold I'm sat out here with this with this fleece on which I'll sit back indoors in a minute when I go make myself another cup of coffee I'll sit down and edit this and stick it up well anyway I've um, rabbited on that's all my news um, my, my father's had his funeral and um, he's been laid to rest so we can all all get on with our lives but we will remember him as he was yeah British police aren't fit for purpose um, and of course the road traffic is getting a lot less so if you do need to make a journey well, you will get there on time because there's hardly any any cars on the motorway now not like they used to be you go back a year ago the, the, it was gridlock traveling down south the roads were gridlocked but this time hardly any traffic on the roads at all austerity the, the energy companies put their fuel up so we stopped using fuel so the energy companies aren't getting the profit that they thought they would get because we're not buying it right anyway I've rabbited on 14 and a half minutes oh yes one more thing before I go um, you know I, I I put a logo at the beginning of this of this movie well I found out that that logo was only filmed in 1080p and I do all my filming on 4k so that little logo was actually dumbing down my movies bringing down the quality from from 4k down to 1080p um, so I, I spent most of yesterday looking for a program that will convert 
1080p up to 4K, upscaling they call it. Anyway, I've done it now. So hopefully you'll see this movie in glorious 4K, 24 frames a second. Okay, well that's enough. See you later. Bye then. Ciao.